Hi, this is Don McAllister, and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online for Mac. As promised in the recent Photos episode, I'm going to revisit a perennial topic, and that's backup. Now, even though a lot of our data is stored on remote cloud-based services, backup is still important or even critical to prevent unexpected data loss. Even with Apple applications such as Photos and iCloud Photo Library, an alternative backup solution is still advisable, either locally or to a different remote backup platform. So in this episode, I'm going to look at some backup solutions, focusing mainly on backing up all of your irreplaceable photos, as well as taking a look at the important consideration of the ease of restoration of your files if and when you need them. Now, if we are talking about backups, then there always will be the need for a full system backup, and I still recommend either Carbon Copy Cloner or SuperDuper to back up your system drive to a local USB or Thunderbolt connected drive. The benefits of that being a full bootable system drive backup is great for rapid recovery in the event of a system drive failure. Now, rather than go through the entire subject again from scratch, because I do cover it each time there's a new OS version, uh, if you go back to, let's see, episode 419 and have a look at Carbon Copy Cloner, I have covered SuperDuper as well. SuperDuper has a free version that you can use to do a full drive backup. Of course, the bootable backup can also be used with Migration Assistant if you're moving from one Mac to another. But in this show, I'm going to sort of focus on backing up your photos. Um, but many of the techniques that I'll describe, you can use for other data as well. But here's the problem with the iCloud Photo Library and Photos. If you delete photos from your iCloud system library, they are deleted from all of your devices and moved into the recently deleted album on your Mac. Now, after 40 days, they are permanently deleted with no chance of recovery. And that being the case, you can't consider iCloud Photo Library to be a backup solution. You must really make other arrangements. Now, the easiest way to make a backup, uh, it's built into the operating system, and that's Time Machine. So let's see how Time Machine works with the Photos application specifically. Now, just as a very, very quick refresher, Time Machine is um, a mechanism built into OS X that allows you to back up your entire machine. You can exclude certain folders or directories as well if you want, um, but you back things up to um, a, either a locally connected USB drive or Thunderbolt drive, uh, or you can connect to an Apple uh, time capsule, which is basically an airport extreme with a built-in hard drive, or you can connect to an Airport Extreme with an externally connected hard drive or any number of third-party uh, drives such as Adrobo or Synology. They will act as Time Machines as well. Now, time Machine is available through System Preferences. So if I just select uh, Time Machine, let's have a look. Here we go. Uh, so I currently have um, a Thunderbolt drive attached. It's got 205 gig of a 250 gig available. Uh, the last backup was uh, well, actually just a few minutes ago. And if we go into Options, I've actually excluded a whole ton of different volumes and uh, external drives, just really to keep the size of the, the backup down for this demonstration. You can click this button and then basically go in and exclude various folders. I've excluded this tidy up folder, which has got a ton of stuff in. I've just excluded it for now. Now, if you leave it as default, it will do a complete backup of your system and you can actually recover from a time machine backup as well. Uh, if you don't want to go to the trouble of having a bootable backup, but I would still recommend a bootable backup and time machine. Now, in addition to the system preferences panel, you can get to time machine up here in the menu bar. So I can see the last time it was backed up. I can run a backup now if I want. I can enter time machine. We'll come back to that later and then open Time Machine Preferences, which will actually open up this panel. Now, just to remind you how I have this set up, if I just go across to the Finder. So this is my Photos library. It's uh, 10 gigabytes. It's a cross over on my data partition, and uh, it contains all my uh, irreplaceable photos. If I actually go across to the Photos album, or rather to the Photos application, uh, let's go to Window Photos. Yeah, I had it minimized. Now, it's uh, very easy to delete files. Basically, I just select, let's select this entire moment, Control backspace and they are deleted, but uh, I still have all my other photos here, but they are available still to me. If I go to uh, show recently deleted, they will actually appear in here and they will stay in this folder. They will be deleted off my other devices, but they will still appear in this folder for 30 days. And these labels will actually show you the number of days left before they are permanently deleted. But once they're permanently deleted, they're gone. You can't actually recover them. 
What I'm actually going to do though, is I'm actually going to go ahead and delete them permanently now. So I'm gonna say delete all. So let's say that we, um, we deleted this moment a while ago. Uh, we thought we had a second copy or we didn't think we'd need the photos at the time, but now we actually want to get them back. How do we get those photos back? Well, we can get them back through Time Machine, if Time Machine has been running while you've been running photos, um, but you can't get back individual images. You can only get back the entire library. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first off, I'm gonna to go to Photos. I'm going to go to Preferences. I'm just gonna make sure that my iCloud Photo Library is all synchronized, there's no activity going on. Looks as though it's been updated, so uh, that should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit Photos. To get the full version of this tutorial completely for free, as well as immediate access to over 500 other Apple-related tutorials, all you need to do is visit seofree.com to register for your 14-day, no-obligation, free trial Screencasts Online membership. So that's seofree.com to register for your 14-day free trial membership. <laughs>